Are you ready to build a business with consistent income and have time left to spend with your family? In Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson, you will learn the strategies to create exactly what you want in your business and in your life. Now, here's your host, Kathleen Reeson. Hello, and welcome to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson. I'm Kathleen Reeson, and I'm so excited to be here, and I'm excited that you guys can be here, too. So thank you for being a part of the show. As uh, There's a chat box here on Inspired Choices Network. If you have a question, drop it in there. What we're talking about today is what when is a good time to start a business? You know, what do I have to think about before I start a business? And it's such an interesting time with everything that's going on in the world right now especially here in the United States, and you know, I've got listeners from all over the world, but we've got, we've got a pandemic going on, we've got uh, riots and protests here going on, especially in the United States. Uh, it's a challenging time to be a business owner, and the question is, is it the right time to be a business owner? And that's the piece of it of every time is the right time to be a business owner, and that's what we're going to talk about here today. So be sure to ask any questions. Well, we're going to start is really thinking about when we go into business, when we're ready to start. And I've done this seven times. Okay, I've started this seven times, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. The first piece is your vision. It's your vision. It's thinking about what you want to create for your business. So way a long time ago, today is actually it's a really cool day for two reasons. One, this show is launching, so we get to celebrate that. And the second is that this today marks 12 years that I've been an entrepreneur. 12 years. So I'm very excited to celebrate with you guys in what that means, what it means to be an entrepreneur. And 12 years ago, I was incredibly pregnant. I was pregnant. I was six months pregnant with my first child. And what I knew I wanted to create for my life was a space where I got to celebrate business. I got to be in business, but I also got to create time with my family. And at that point, I didn't know a lot of entrepreneurs. All that I knew about entrepreneurship was that it was a lot of work. And in my mind, the story that I told myself was that I could be an entrepreneur, but I couldn't have a family. I couldn't have time for myself. I couldn't take a vacation. I couldn't enjoy life with my kids, my future kids. I had to choose between one or the other. And what I know now is that's simply not true. That's simply not true. We can create exactly what we want, and that space comes from vision. So for me, back 12 years ago, I decided I'm going to have a life where I'm going to have a business and I'm going to have a family. And that's what I started with. That was my come from. And then I thought, what kind of business do I want to be in? Because here's the thing. People that are really entrepreneurs, the business is actually irrelevant. It's not about the type of business. It's just about that we are in business. So think about what type of business we most resonate with, what type of business would be fun, but that's why I own seven. And a lot of entrepreneurs, you'll see that they they have side hustles on top of their business. They're in lots of different things. And the reason that that happens is because we get so excited about the ideas of business. We get so excited about the ideas of business that we want to spin off a whole bunch of things. And so while that's exciting, what we get to think about from entrepreneurs is focus. And focus comes from vision. Okay, so I have this vision that I get to spend time with my family and I get to have a business. But the question became, what kind of business? So my past, I had back way back in college, I had a double major in advertising and accounting. And I got out of school. I went and got my CPA license because I wanted to understand business. I knew, I think I want to I think I want to own a business and did that, had this advertising background and thought, you know, advertising is a pretty simple business philosophy. I think I could get this advertising game down. And so I open up this advertising agency. I, I go to work at an advertising agency. So follow this path here. I go, I earn my CPA license, and then I decide I'm going to go work at an advertising agency, get a little bit of experience. So I do that. And now here I am, six months pregnant, and I say, it's, it's now or never. I've got to make this choice. So I do. I get to make this choice. And I step out into the world and create my own advertising agency. Okay. So my vision was, all right, advertising, I could sell ideas. But at the time, I was really unattached to what it looked like. I had this background in finance. And so how I went to business day one was, hey, advertising agency owners, I'll help you figure out your financial picture and figure out how you grow your business. So that was my target. Now, what that morphed into was what a traditional advertising agency looks like. And that was me being unattached. It was just, I'm going to create something that earns money. And, and that's another piece of business is we get to be unattached to how things flow. And the way we start something isn't necessarily how we end it. 
So that's, that's the piece with business ownership is this fluctuation. Now, when I started this business, it was all virtual the first year. We didn't have, it was just me. We didn't, we didn't have a physical space. We didn't have, uh, there were no other employees. I had started to work with another gentleman who was a, was a contractor. Uh, and as we started to shift this business really pretty early on, what I noticed was when I was in conversations with other business owners, they would ask me, hey, um, do you know anybody that can help with design? Or they would ask me about uh, different questions. And that's how we morphed into being more of a traditional advertising agency. And so this gentleman, he was a designer. And I worked with him on so many projects and he had his own thing going. I said, hey, why don't, why don't we look at partnering? And that's how we started this shift. So when I talk about being unattached, being that vision, what do I want to create? The, how it looks is it's going to look a lot of different ways. Okay, so I start out, no physical space. Well, year one goes by and we decide, wouldn't it be nice to have an office space? So you guys, I go and I look at all these office spaces and I find one and it's, it's really nice and it's really expensive and it's huge. I mean, this is, we have no employees, this guy that's now my partner and we decide that we want this like 2000 square foot office space and it's expensive. We've got to, we've got to outfit it with uh, chairs and desks and a reception. I, I wanted a beautiful reception space. And so I put together a budget for a year. And I thought, well, I'll just go get a loan. And I say, I, I'm, I love that the story's coming up because it's not even one that I talk about often. Uh, so I think, well, I'll go get a loan. And so this is a year in. I have not had any capital up until this point. And I go to the banker and I've detailed out, you know, this is my former CPA self. I detail out everything that I want this loan for, what it's going to include. And I even include our payroll costs because, you know, I want to be paid <laughs> And I put it in this nice spreadsheet, and it was a very modest amount, but I wanted to be paid. And I give it to the banker, and you guys, I'm chuckling because in the moment it wasn't funny, but now it is. I hand it to the banker, and he was so kind. He was like a father figure, and he says to me, okay, I'll look this over. I thought, I've got a shot. I left that meeting thinking, there's a chance that they're going to approve this. And a few days later, he comes in, um, we meet at a coffee shop, and he looks at me, and he says, are you open to a conversation about this? I said, well, absolutely, thinking he's going to give us this money, and I'm really excited. And he says, don't get a loan on this. I said, what do you mean don't get a loan? Like, this is, this is pivotal to us landing new clients. And he says, this would saddle you with debt that you don't want. Figure out how to do this. If, you, if it's the office space you really want, figure out how to do it without a loan. Figure out how to do it without a loan. And that was a turning point for me because I'm sitting here saying, well, how am I going to do this? Don't you believe in me enough to give me this loan? And what I realized now was that was the best piece of advice because I didn't want a loan based on a bunch of stuff. And what it created was I got to figure out how to bring in revenue to support this space that I believed was the next step for our business. And so I went out and we landed another client uh, that actually paid for all of the rent plus some. And it was a pivotal space, having that, that space. We actually got a subleaser, so a company that was more in digital services, websites, app development, and they had part of the space. And then we had uh, a lot of the other space and we had some shared areas. And that was a really great way to reduce expenses. So getting into a, a physical environment, well, now we were carrying – carrying rent costs. So we're playing a different game. And as I fast forward now, uh, 11 years later, <laughs> I've learned a ton. And I'm actually in the space where I have some businesses that are physical and some businesses that are virtual. And I'll tell you what, uh, we're actually launching some more into the space that are all virtual. Right now is a great time to be a business. Is it a great time to be in business in a physical environment? I mean, type in the chat room. What do you guys think? Like, yes, no. Is it a good time to be in a business in a physical environment, meaning you've got a physical location? What do you think? So just go ahead, type yes or no in there. Yep, risk likely low. Great point. What else do we think? Anybody else have some thoughts on that? Is now a great time to be in business in a physical environment? Yeah, so we're all across the board, and the reality is that maybe, maybe, okay, that's the most agonizing answer, right? Maybe. So the, the space, if you have a physical environment, it depends on what your vision for the company is. So I'll tell you, in my business coaching, it does not matter whether I physically meet with somebody else or not. Most of my calls are on Zoom or the phone. Uh, 
it doesn't if they're physically happen to be in the same location as me from a from a city perspective we could meet anywhere you mean if they have a physical space so physical spaces have become irrelevant to a lot of businesses I also own some gyms. So the scope of, of my business expertise, we have three gyms and two martial arts studios, and then I have a business coaching firm. The three gyms and the two martial arts studios, those are physical businesses. Right now, yes, rents are low uh, in some places, but the actual market fluctuations from what we're looking at right now with the pandemic, market fluctuations follow about six months behind where the economy is. So the rent prices from the fluctuations and actually getting a lot of great deals, we're not going to see that actually happen in most markets for another six months, which means that uh, I was looking at a space right before this. We had a deal all negotiated to go into a new space before the pandemic hit, and the landlord pulled all the financing on it. It's just gone in an instant. I had another one who we'd started down this path. I had uh, $75,000 on the line, and the landlord pulled that too. So you add all that, it's a lot of money. And so six months from now, the markets will fluctuate. You'll see rent rates drop significantly, and that's a time to uh, get into properties. But right now, I would go virtual. I wouldn't sign a lease right now that uh, – was going to be at rates that were they were three months ago because I know six months from now those rates will not be in existence. So if I were to sign a contract, I would sign it with a clause that said reevaluation in six months of rates with the market or something like that so that we can keep moving business forward. So a lot of questions that I get are really about like, how do I actually stay? How do I move forward in a business? So if I'm if I'm in a, if I'm in a position where I'm thinking about do I get into a lease agreement right now? I don't know. I'd, I'd really look at that vision. I'd, I'd consider not seeing how long you can go without it. Just like in my first year of business, we went an entire year without needing a space. And now I could say, mm, we could probably wait longer. So physical or virtual, that's something that gets to factor into how your vision comes into place. Do you need a physical location or can you operate virtually? Once you have that in mind, that's when we can start getting up into questions about startup funds or, uh, or who do I need on my team? Or do I need a brand to get started? All these questions are phenomenal questions to ask once we have an idea of what we want to create, okay? what we want to create, what's our vision for ourselves and for our business. Okay? What's our vision for ourselves and for our business? And thinking about our vision for ourselves, some people, especially when we're in the early stages of conversations, they think it's selfish to think about what we want for ourselves. But it's actually selfless. We've got to have, make sure that we get to create what we want in our world through our business before we can focus on other people, okay, before we can focus on other people. So think about that. When you think about, am I ready to start a business, what do I need to think about? It's what do I actually want to create? Okay, do I want to work all the time? Do I want to create something where I'm working 20 hours a week? What am I willing to commit to this business to get it off the ground? And from there, we can start to build out other factors. So we are going to hop on to a break here. And when we get back, we're going to talk about what about when you have a vision, when you know where you're going, where do I go next? What is it? What kind of funds do I need? What do I need to think about? Who do I pull together so that we know where we're headed with this business? All right, let's hop on a break real quick and we'll come back. Building a business is a lot like baking a cake. There are certain ingredients that can't be missed. By listening to Profit Launch with Kathleen Neeson, you will learn the five key steps that every great business utilizes. You will hear from successful entrepreneurs that will share what works and what doesn't work in their businesses. You will have an opportunity to ask questions so you can apply these steps directly to your business. Host and business coach Kathleen Reeson built seven successful businesses while raising three boys, volunteering extensively, and having some time left for her husband and herself. Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson, and she will show you how you can build the business and the life you dream of, too. Are you ready? Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson Radio Show every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world 
knowing your voice matters, and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reese. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reese. I'm your host, Kathleen Reese. And we are talking about what does it take to actually start a business. Before we went on break, we talked about vision, having a vision for yourself and your business and understanding what you want to create. And we, did, we talked a little bit about physical or virtual spaces and really how we show up in the business. What we're going to talk about now is the startup funds. Okay, so what, what kind of money does it take to actually start up a business? Do we need a lot of money? A lot of people were asking about capital. So one of the things we think about is what are we spending on the money right away? And as someone who started up seven different businesses, what I can tell you is that it depends on the business. Okay, So my very first business that we talked about before the break, I started up an advertising agency. And I thought in the beginning, so this was 12 years ago today, in the beginning, I thought I've got to have a website, the branding's got to be perfect before I go to market. So from day one, the branding's got to be perfect. And what I realize now is that what I created in the beginning is not what the business ended up being. Okay, so there, there are five steps to growing a business. And we talk, we'll talk a lot about this in, over the coming weeks in the radio show. It's actually on, I have a, a course, ProfitLaunchClub.com. It launches July 1st and it walks through these five steps. But step number four, step number four is is enrollment, and step number five is scale. So we'll go through what all those five steps are, but what I want you guys to know is that the actual place of really understanding what it is that you're growing doesn't actually come in until step four of growing a business, until step four. So if you're in step one, which is vision, if you're in step one and you're determining your branding, your logos, your website, how everything's going to look when you get to step five, hear me, I guarantee you, what you believe that it will be at step one will be very different than what it is when you get to step five. Very different. And so for those that invest heavily in the beginning, and by heavily, I mean it could be $1,000, it could be $10,000, it could be even more. For those that invest all that money in step one in their branding, by the time they get to step five, they're going to look back and say, ooh, I wish I would have done just enough in the beginning so that I could revisit it when I get to stage to step five so that that money that I would have put forward in step one, if I would have held on to that to step five or even step four into that enrollment piece. And so what that means is that when we're in this stage of getting ready to launch, what do we actually need? Well, we need enough. And that could be a lead page, a landing page. These, these words get thrown around a lot. So the website. A website is just a series of landing pages, okay? So if you guys go on, I'll give you a perfect example. If you go to ProfitLaunchClub.com, ProfitLaunchClub.com, that's it's a, what you'll see is a landing page, okay? You can call it a website. There's three different connected pages to it, but there's the main home page, which explains what I'm up to. There's the about page, which explains who I am. That's my credibility builder. And then there's the join now. So in this case, if you are someone who was saying, hey, I'm really excited about launching a, a business uh, and I want to know a little bit about what – I heard about this profit launch thing. I don't know what it is. You would go to ProfitLaunchClub.com and on that first page, you would see the details. So you'd see there are five steps that this person, Kathleen, uh, and you might say, I don't really know who she is, but right there it's going to tell you, hey, this person has started up seven different businesses, so maybe she has a, a clue of what's going on, maybe not, we'll dig deeper, and then, oh, she's got her CPA license, so it's got the credibility building points, so think about that for you, what are your credibility building points, so those are all included in there, and then it tells a little bit about the five steps, so it is the the piece that's actually going to show you what uh, what you're going to get. Right? When you sign up, this is what you get. So now I'm looking at the bottom of this. 
I get to the bottom of this page and I think, okay, I, I might be interested in this. And I have the option to join. So I've got my call to action. We've also got this about page that just, again, remember that's the credibility builder. And then you've got the enrollment. So these are three very different purposes all pulled into one. They're three different landing pages that have some continuity to it. So lots of companies build these out. We have fancy landing pages, but a lot of times when we build up, we build these, we build them without an intention. Okay, so we really get to think of our intention. When we're in step one, the intention could be just to get people excited and give them a place to enroll. Okay, so guys, websites can cost anywhere, our landing pages, you know, can cost anywhere from 20 bucks, or you could do it yourself, all the way to twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. When we're talking twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 plus sites or landing pages, we're talking about things that have apps, things that, uh, we're talking about technology that's built into back ends of systems. Larger corporations pay for very expensive sites. As a startup in this stage, that's not what we need. Okay, that's not what we need. We need most likely a landing page. So for me, I've used click funnels, I've used lead pages, I've used a lot of different tools. Right now, lead pages is my favorite for no other reason than it's very simple to use. Okay, so I use lead pages. It's leadpages.net. It's pretty inexpensive. And you can integrate. So what I created, if you go to the profitlaunchclub.com, what you'll see is that is actually a lead page and it's integrated. The payment function is integrated through Stripe. So that's a very easy tool. So Stripe, Stripe is where I would actually collect money. Okay, so it's integrated with Stripe. I also have, and this is going to sound complicated, but I'm telling you this so that you can see how everything can look together. I also have Active Campaign that I use, and that's where I put all of my information on my customers, my prospects. It all goes into Active Campaign. That's how I send my emails out. So that's my system. When somebody signs up for Profit Launch Club, it also sends a notification to my email. And it dumps it, their name and their contact information into a list in Active Campaign. So I can pull up in a second who the people are that then registered for Profit Launch Club. So I've got my payment. I've got my place where I can now email all of them, and I can set up automatic emails on the back end. And I've got my landing page, which is really my marketing tool to get people excited about Profit Launch Club. So we've got all kinds of different tools. Now, when you're starting up, you could put that together, all that whole system. If you knew what you were doing, you could do it for no money. It's a DIY. Now, if you want some assistance with that, there are people that understand these systems very well, like on um, Upwork or HireMyMom.com. You can go to places like these. There are people that understand these systems, these tools, and you say, this is what I want to create, and they'll spin them up for you. And there's usually those, are, for, for the entire process that we just talked about, you can get all of that done for probably 500 to $700. Have it all set up. Have your landing pages spun up. Have your connection with your payment gateway. And have your connection into emails. You may not have an active campaign, and there's different costs for that one. But think about that. You could have all that set up. So that would get you to the place where now when you're out talking about what you want to create, that people actually look at that and say, oh, this looks like a legitimate business. So for $500 to $700, you could have that spun up. Or you can you could pay $5,000 for a really fancy website that by the time you get to whether this business is going to, going to be proven, you may not want it anymore. So that's why people choose this simpler option. Okay, So that's a way to save some money in the beginning. Now, another challenge that I see that people make when they have these ideas, they've got a vision, they're going to create this business, they spend all of their money on the operations, okay? So they want to make the, the best product, especially if we're in a service, a so product or service. And for those of you guys that don't know the difference, let's, let's talk about the difference between product or service because it actually can get very confusing. Okay, so a service-based industry. Service-based industry is anything that I'm using to serve. So... I work with a lot of advertising agencies and design firms and coaches and consultants. Those are all service-based, okay? So the only way that we earn money is when people are paying us for time. Time, ideas, uh, then they pay us. So that's service-based. A product-based, so think about somebody that produces something like a manufacturing company. Uh, those would be or you know, a car, 
a uh, even this. So there's a little there's a gray area, and I'm gonna sit, we're gonna sit right in that gray area for just a second. Service based companies can have products. Okay, service based companies can have products. So for example, I'm a business coach, which is a service, but I offer Profit Launch Club, which is a course, and a course is a product. Okay, so I'm a service based company that offers a product. Okay, but I really am selling my knowledge and my credibility. So I go under the guise of a service-based company. Now, personally, I have marketed and I have supported service and product. I prefer service-based because a lot of products, especially typical products when you think of manufacturers, there's a lot of costs that go into that. (laughs) And that's not my skill set. I'm not an engineer. I don't know a lot about uh, how to to really build or design. So like I actually, I made cookies yesterday uh, and we're horrible. I could never go into a baking business. They were flat and crispy and they were not that great. Uh, and so that would not be for me. But talk about a service-based business. I could do that all day long. So you get the point is you get to figure out is service-based or product-based more for you? Which one are you more aligned with? Okay, Service-based or product-based. And most of the people that are connected to me are in the service space. They may have a product, like I said, remember, the, like a course, but they're really service-based businesses. And service-based, what we're talking about here, there are still operations that get to go involved in, that are involved in that. So there's some costs of R&D, research and development, but nothing like in a manufacturing experience. Like, for example, I had a client when we ran our marketing firm, and they produce slip rings. Okay, So slip rings are uh, anything that rotates, a Ferris wheel, a windmill, anything that rotates has a component in it that's called a slip ring. It's called a slip ring. And that is, uh, so all the different wires that are in that component, we can't get them tangled or that it would just fry and it wouldn't be able to spin. So the slip ring is what comp- contains those wires so that they don't get tangled. So a really important piece, very product-driven piece. So the amount of research and development that goes into that product to get it out to the customers is a lot. Let's <laughs> just say a lot. Well, in the service-based business, we don't have that. We just think through different processes. So we might think through a four-step process to get our message out into the world. So for example, this is how it looks. I told you I have a five-step process in how businesses are launched. I've used it in all seven of mine. And every client that I coach and consult with, I also use this process. Okay. So for me, that's a five-step process. You guys all have some equivalent to that. Yours might be three, yours might be six, but people buy systems and processes. People buy systems and processes. And that's what you get to create. Now, one of the things that I love creating, it is my my expertise, is creating a signature money funnel, a signature money funnel. And that is how money flows in what you want to create, how money flows. And so that's saying that you get to say, if I want to make this much money, this is how how it's going to be created. And that's what I say. If you follow this five-step process, you will have your own signature money funnel. So for you, what is your signature money funnel? What is your signature money funnel? I'll give you this quick story before we head on break. Uh, Right during the pandemic, people said people aren't spending money. Okay, I heard it all over the news. People aren't spending money. And yet the donut shop, Hertz Donuts, if you guys have one near you, Hertz Donuts is a big coffee shop. They offered drive-up donuts. They would drive up to your house and drop off these donuts. And they put a call line so you could call in and register and open for your donuts. But they only had it open for a certain period of time, maybe two hours, to reserve your donuts for three days from now. And so they thought, I wonder if this will be a success. They opened this line up, and they filled the orders in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. These donuts are signature donuts. They're $30 for a box of a dozen donuts, and they fill them. So think about that. People are spending money, but what is your donut? What are people willing to spend money on? And they say, I'm going to spend it with you. So I will leave you on this commercial break. Hang on with us. We're going to talk about, continue on this. What is your donut? We'll talk about that after the break. Enjoy. Building a business is a lot like baking a cake. There are certain ingredients that can't be missed. By listening to Profit Launch with Kathleen Neeson, you will learn the five key steps that every great business utilizes. 
you will hear from successful entrepreneurs that will share what works and what doesn't work in their businesses. You will have an opportunity to ask questions so you can apply these steps directly to your business. Host and business coach Kathleen Reeson built seven successful businesses while raising three boys, volunteering extensively, and having some time left for her husband and herself. Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson, and she will show you how you can build the business and the life you dream of, too. Are you ready? Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson Radio Show every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. Now, back to the program. Hello, and welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson. I'm your host, Kathleen Reeson. And right before we went to break, we asked, what is your donut? Okay, so we shared a story about the donut company that was getting people for $30 for a dozen donuts that the people were lining up. They called so quickly to get these donuts. And this is at a time when we're saying people aren't spending money. Well, they are. They're just spending it in different areas. And so we all get to figure out what is your donut. And that's a question I've been asking myself a lot lately, a lot. And uh, we're talking about our gyms. Let's Let's talk about that for just a second. So here we are. Three months ago, we've got physical, we've got gyms, not just gyms, ones that require their group fitness. And now we've got a challenge. So this is you know, three months ago. We're in a group fitness gym where people cannot now be close to each other. And then, so we figure that out, and then we decide to shut down because of the pandemic. Okay, that was actually a pretty easy decision. But then opening back up opened up this whole other space of, Okay, well, now we've got distancing to consider. So the 30 people that used to be able to come into the space now can't. Now we can have maybe up to 10 safely. But for every person that's in here, it's going to require 30 minutes of cleaning. Every time we have a new group of people come in, we've got a ton of cleaning around the other side. We've got a ton of cleaning. Okay, so so my donut that used to be the gym, you know, it's a really ironic <laughs> example, but the donut used to be the hook of people wanted to be healthy and they wanted to come to the gym for it. And what I, we got to look at was people wanted to be healthy, but is coming to the gym the piece of it anymore? Okay, where's the donut? And what we realized was some people, yes, but the majority, no. They wanted to be healthy and we got to reevaluate what that looked like. So that's we're in the space right now of uh, we've been in, in the virtual fitness, as are a lot of other companies, and really launching into a business-to-business -business space. And uh, I'll, I'll talk way more about that in the coming weeks. But the reality is our donut shifted. Okay, our donut, our donut changed, and we got to figure out what the new donut was. If we would have kept with the old donut, nobody wanted it anymore. It was like the the glazed donut used to be really popular, and now the glazed donut's kind of boring because there's all these other fancier donuts. I just saw one the other day, a lemon donut. It's a donut of the month at our grocery store. It looked really good. I don't even eat donuts, but I thought it looked good. And the glazed donut is just kind of like, eh. If, if I was selling glazed donuts, I think Krispy Kreme really made its start on glazed donuts. And now that now the glazed donut is just one other type of donut. So we get to continuously figure out what our new donut is because it always changes. So when we're launching new businesses, we got to figure out what is our donut. And now that we've been talking all about donuts, perhaps you're hungry. I should have, I get to have a food sponsor. <laughs> but when you think about what is your donut? So how do you figure out your donut? What I really hear, when I talk with a lot of my clients, they underestimate their donut. And they think, well, who would who would buy my donut? If this is my donut, would anybody really want it? Okay, so go ahead, type in the chat room. If you for the other live, just type in there. What do you think your donut is? Think about that. What do you think your donut is? I've heard donuts. For, I saw one the other day. You guys, this was great. It was door hangers. So if you've ever seen that, uh, when you you drive by grease on doors, there is a lady. There's a lady who has been very successful. She's been over, built over a million-dollar business offering door hangers. And I don't mean she 
creates the door hangers and sells them. She teaches people every single month. So it's a membership site. Every single month, she teaches people how to create a new door hanger. And she's made a million dollars on it. So a donut can be something very simple. Oftentimes, we make donuts really complex. We make what our signature item is really, really complex. So go ahead, drop in there. What do you think your donut is? Is it some piece of knowledge? Is it a course? That what would what would be the course? What would you be selling? Think about what your donut might be, and what you might want to offer. Because if people most of the time make their donut way too complex, so they would say, "Well, uh, what I'm going to offer is," and it may sound something like, "I'm going to offer a." Uh, system that people can understand FASB and uh, they're going to be able to, to get it quickly, uh, then they won't even need me and I can go on and on and on, but this is something in the accounting world and it, it makes no sense to most people. Okay, So so the donut, while it may make sense to a lot of other people, or to, 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 it may make sense to you, it doesn't make sense to anybody else. Okay, So it's too complicated and we get to pull back and pull back and pull back and meet people where they are. And so in that case where I was just talking about the FASB, that piece, really a company wants to understand that their regulations are being met. And so might they hire a company that could support them in understanding that their regulations are being met? It could be that simple. Okay? And, and let's use a, a, a design firm because I love working with those and they're, they're a lot easier to understand when we're talking about design, things that we create. Let's say somebody creates design, brand. Okay, they're going to create a brand. We were talking about brands earlier. Uh, they want to create a logo, so you need a logo. So they could say, "Hey, I'll sell you a logo for what? Five hundred dollars, thousand dollars. The price is irrelevant. I'll send you a logo. Is it a logo that you want? Is it a logo that you want? Nobody really wants a logo. They want to. They want to be seen in a professional way. They want. They want a mark. They want a representation of themselves or of their business." that is authentically who they are. Sell them that, they get it. The logo is just like a fancy word. There was a saying that I heard, uh, oh, it's something that stuck with me for years, and it is a guy walks into a hardware store, and he says, I want a hammer and a nail. And a salesperson walks the person over to the section where there are all the hammers and all the nails. If you've ever been to a hardware store, it can be overwhelming to stand in front of 17 different types of hammers and a million different types of nails. And so this gentleman, he looks at the hammers and he looks at the nails. And he's so confused. And the gentleman in the hardware store says, I don't understand. You said you wanted a hammer and the nails. What kind of hammer do you want? The guy says, I, I don't know. And he says, well, what kind of nails do you want? And he says, I don't know. So the salesperson says, I'm confused. You asked for a hammer and a nail. The guy says, I know I did. I know I did, but what is it that I really, what is it that the guy really wants a hammer and nail for? So the salesperson says, okay, let's step back. Why do you want, what is it? When you have this hammer and a nail and you get where you're going, what are you going to do with it? He says, I just want to hang a picture on the wall. I just want to hang a picture on the wall. And the salesperson goes, oh, <laughs> you don't want the nails. You want the picture hanging kit. And he walks him over to an entirely different section where there is a picture hanging kit where he can see, based on the size of the pictures, the nails all prepackaged in a pretty price or pretty plastic packaging. He can see, oh, this is what I need. And there's a hammer hanging right next to it. And you know what? The guy actually pays double because it's all packaged nicely and put together for him. And he gladly goes to the checkout because now he knows that he has what he needs. He didn't care about the hammer and the nail. He cared about seeing the beautiful picture of his family hanging on the wall. So the point is here, if we focus on selling the hammer and the nail, we'll never understand that the people really want the picture hanging on the wall. The people really just want the picture hanging on the wall. They want the memory that's up there on the wall. They could care less about the hammer and the nail. And when we connect that and we understand that what we're really offering, our donut, our stitch, our product, our service, is that we are supporting gentlemen or, or women in hanging the picture on the wall, that's when we'll make sales. That's when we'll make connections. I'll tell you another story. 
about the hardware store, I got a lot of these guys. My husband sent me this very early on in our marriage. We're celebrating 15 years of marriage on Thursday, too. It's a big week. He said, we're building a, a patio. And he says to me, hey, could you go to the hardware store? I need a quarter-inch pipe. And so I said, no problem. I was happy to help him. And I go to the hardware store, and I walk in, and I look at all the different pipes, and I don't see a quarter inch of a pipe. I could buy six foot of pipe or eight foot of pipe, but I didn't see a quarter inch of pipe. And for those of you that understand hardware, you, you're probably laughing at this point because you realize, you realize what I didn't know. But my husband asked me to get a quarter of inch pipe. And what I thought that I was going to come home with a literally a quarter inch of pipe. I didn't realize that he meant that the thickness of the pipe was a quarter of an inch. And that he didn't care if it was six foot or eight foot. His, the thickness was a quarter of an inch. But what I heard, what I heard was that it was a quarter inch pipe. Okay. So differences in what we hear, what we sell. So again, this goes back to when we start a business, when we're thinking about what we get to create, we get to put our mind, our ourselves in the minds of our buyer and we get to think about what we're going to offer them that they want to buy what we're going to offer them that they want to buy not because we want to sell it but because they require it remember the hammer and the nails it's the picture finishing kit that's what they really want and so i have worked with a lot of clients where they come to me and they say i am the maker of the nail i say no one cares about your nail they care what your nail does no one cares about your nail. They care what your nail does. So as a business coach, I could say that, yeah, I, I love uh, working with small business owners to support them in, in growing their business, which is great. I do love that. And in reality, what my clients care about is creating consistent income, creating business that lasts, even six figures. Nobody cares about whether they have a six-figure business or a seven-figure business or an eight-figure business if they're not actually supporting themselves and their employees and their customers along the way. If they don't have consistent income, it doesn't matter what number is on the, the revenue statement. That is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if they've made $7 million. If they, if they can't support an income for themselves, if they can't create consistent income for themselves and their families and their employees – then it doesn't matter how big the company is. And I have seen companies, I think we all have, that are very large companies that really aren't profitable companies. And that's when we get into challenges where uh, we got to make some decisions from scarcity. And so what I am about, what we're creating, are businesses that are sustainable and built on these five core steps, these five core steps so that we create profitable businesses from the start, from the start. When I started my first business, it took me three years to really feel confident that what I was to create was going to work. And even when when we bought these gems, so that was, oh, 2014, we bought those. So six years after I'd already started my first business, you know, it took about two years till I really feel like, okay, we got something here. And then we bought another one. So uh, I wrote a whole book. It's called Joy and Uncertainty. And it describes all the details, all the, the fun details about – this past experience that I have of actually buying these businesses and we had some other crazy things happen along the way. My husband almost died twice. My youngest son, we have three boys now, my youngest son almost died about 30 times in his first year of life. It was absolutely crazy. So the book, Joy in Uncertainty, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's an ebook form right now. It'll come out in paper book soon. But Joy in Uncertainty really describes the, these time periods and uh, – how how we got through all of these. So if you're interested in, in more of those details, definitely check out the book. It's $3.99 on uh, Amazon. So it's a really great place just to read and absorb that and definitely ask any questions along the way. Uh, but my, my point here is that as we're, as we're looking about really starting these businesses, it can take a while to really get the confidence into starting a business. And when you follow the five steps, we can speed that process up. Okay, so we don't, I don't want you sitting for three years wondering if this is a go. I did that. Don't be like me. <laughs> we get to go faster, and we get to have the confidence. And so when we come back from this last commercial break, what we're going to talk about is what's the next step? How do I get moving? How do I get going? All right, hop on this commercial break next, and I'll talk with you guys here in just a few minutes. Building a business is a lot like baking a cake. There are certain ingredients that can't be missed. 
By listening to Profit Launch with Kathleen Neeson, you will learn the five key steps that every great business utilizes. You will hear from successful entrepreneurs that will share what works and what doesn't work in their businesses. You will have an opportunity to ask questions so you can apply these steps directly to your business. Host and business coach Kathleen Reeson built seven successful businesses while raising three boys, volunteering extensively, and having some time left for her husband and herself. Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson, and she will show you how you can build the business and the life you dream of, too. Are you ready? Listen to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson Radio Show every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. Now, back to the program. Hey guys, welcome back to Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson. I'm your host, Kathleen Reeson, and we're talking all about what type of business should I create? How do I get started? And so this last uh, few minutes of the show, what we're going to talk about is, okay, so I've got this idea. How do I actually get started? So what do I do first? I was talking with a gentleman the other day, and he said, so I call my accountant first or my lawyer, and I get the business credentials set up. So, well, you know, maybe, and that depends on where you're at. So I'm not offering you legal advice here. I'm saying, uh, yes, you get to have a conversation with your accountant or your lawyer and figure out what that looks like for your state. And most of the time, what they want to see is what a viable business looks like. And a viable business is a business that has a plan, can earn money, and has earned money. Okay, so in most cases, like in my businesses, I had the general structure. I knew where I was headed, but I wanted to prove it before I really got going on it. And so that would be one sale, okay, one sale or one contract or one great conversation so that I knew I was going to be able to move forward. And in order to make that one sale, I had to have my idea. Okay, so we talked about you get to have your vision, you get to figure out if you're running a physical or a virtual space right now, and more than anything, you get to figure out who would want to buy this? Okay, the target audience. Who would want to buy this? So remember when we talked about the hardware store, the the woman or the man that's got to put the picture, wants to put the picture up? Okay, so in that case, we could build an entire persona. So we call people uh, the, our target audience. We say persona. And that is we want to know everything about that person. We want to know everything about it. And that would mean uh, I can tell you all these fancy words that you may or may not have heard of psychographic, demographic. And what that really means is I want to know where they live. I want to know how much money they have, disposable income. I want to know their household income. I want to know what kind of car they drive. I want to know what kind of ice cream they like. I want to know what their job is. I want to know what their limiting beliefs are. So what's holding them back? I want to know uh, what their religion is. And all these things, we can actually gather that data. That's pretty cool. We can gather that data. Next week, we're going to talk more about that, how you actually do that. Uh, <laughs> the way that, that marketing plays, we can get pretty deep in that, and it's kind of creepy when you think about all the different data points that people have on you. The average uh, citizen around the world, there's companies, research companies, and they have 14 different data points on every human being, 14 different data points. So that could that could be something like uh, Kathleen Reeson, she likes Edie's ice cream and wears ASIC running shoes and likes uh, colorful socks typically New Balance brand, and I'm making this stuff up, although I do like all those things, uh, but they know 14 different data points. Well, how how do they know this? And that's where it gets pretty cool. That's where it gets pretty cool. So there's all kinds of contracts that happen behind the scenes that you and I know nothing about. But it's how, uh, have you ever gotten in the mail? It's just kind of cool. Have you ever gotten in the mail an ad that was so incredibly targeted to you? Like maybe, uh, maybe if you've had a, a baby, and you get ads for coupons for formula, and then you get an ad for mm, building a new deck, so wood. Well, what we know is that people that have babies are more likely to build a deck. Again, I'm making this up. Uh, but if that were the case, if that were a proven connection, then really the, the companies want a partner. They want a partner with with pediatricians 
or with OB offices. So somebody that has a decking company would want to partner with an OB office because they know that people that are more likely to have babies would buy their products. And so now I'm going to partner with them and I'm going to create an advertising relationship where I can now target your customers. So this is why it's really important to know everything you can about your customer. So how do you get started when you don't have this information? You guess. You guess. And that's what's pretty fun. You get to guess. You make assumptions and you move forward. And then you're going to prove those assumptions. And then you're going to move forward again. And you're going to be unattached. That's the beautiful part. We just get to move forward. If we say, hey, I've got this idea for a business. Here's the secret. You ready for this? Just move forward. <laughs> just move forward. If you've got an idea and you think it could work, it can. Believe me, a lot of the things that I have done in my life, nobody would ever believe <laughs> that they could actually work. And, you know, some of them haven't. I've had massive failures. I explain a lot of that in the book. And I've had a lot of things that have gone really well that I would consider my successes. And so that's the piece of if you've got an idea, you've got something that you really want to create. You just get to make some assumptions and move forward. You just get to make some assumptions and move forward. So you get this idea of, hey, I think that uh, people would pay me for creating door hangers. Or I think that I'm actually a really good cook. And I think that people would buy my cookies. Or I think that I am really good at motivational speaking and people would want to hear what I have to say. We could go on and on and on with all these different ideas, but if you think you have an idea that could work, it, it will work. It will work. And so you just get to apply the five steps that we're talking about here. We'll go through all five of them over the coming weeks. And again, you can go to ProfitLaunchClub.com and you can learn all about what those five steps are. And if you're interested, hop on the course. There's actually right now, between now and July 1st, that course is normally going to be $899. I am offering it for a pre-sale for $599. So it's a great opportunity where if you are at all interested, hop in there and learn. We're going to talk about all these five steps. I'm just going to go over them real quick just so they're in your mind. The first one is vision. You get to have a vision for yourself and your business. The second one is target audience. You get to know who you're going after and you get to know them in such detail that you know exactly what they want, feel, and need. The third one is your offering. That's your signature money funnel that we talked about. That's understanding the prices, the products, the packaging, how you go to market, how you show up. The fourth one is your enrollment. That is where you get people excited about what you're offering. That's where you make the sale, the connection, and the relationship. And the fifth one, the fifth one is the scale. The fifth one is how you attract the audience, how you grow that business, how it continues to move forward. Those five pieces, you put those underneath your idea, and now you've got a successful functioning business that can create consistent income. That is the recipe for success, guys. It's right there. I'm handing it to you. It's about these five steps, applying them to your idea, and more than anything, taking the leap, knowing you can do it, going for it, just moving forward and not listening to yourself or anybody else saying, you can't do this, here's why you shouldn't do it. I had plenty of that. I've had plenty of that along the way, and I'll tell you, you can. You can. And you get to find people like me and other people around you that will lift you up, see you, believe you, and see you in your highest, and know that anything is possible. Anything is possible. So when you combine these five steps with your idea, that's when you have traction. That's when you get to create what you want. And so now more than ever is the time. Now is the time with everything that's going on in our world. Now is the time to step forward, say, hey, guys, I've got an idea and move forward with it. And know that it gets to be successful because you've got a vision. You know exactly who you're going after. You know you've got your signature money funnel figured out. You know how to sell because you've got those skills, and you know how to move forward. So this is a powerful place. You guys, we are just about out of time today. I thank you so much for joining us on Profit Launch Club with Kathleen Reeson. I'm your host, Kathleen Reeson, and I'm so excited to leave you with this message that you can do it. You've got an idea? Go for it. Don't hold back. No, now. Now is the time. Now is the time to create exactly what you want. So utilize the five steps, move forward, and have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to Profit Launch with Kathleen Risa. Kathleen Risa will return next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 
9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Would you like to be on the show or do you have a show idea? Go to KathleenReason.com forward slash radio. Have a great week.